I think I just went to the bathroom in my pants a little bit. Holy cow, look at the size of that snake. Wow, the most dangerous job in the United States right here, folks. Wow, that is a very, very strong snake. Whoa! When it comes to creatures that humans are afraid of, I always say there's the three big S's. Sharks, spiders, and snakes. You're very unlikely to be attacked or bitten by these animals. Yet unfortunate accidental encounters do happen. And in a worst case scenario, a single bite could put your life on the line. Today we are visiting the Reptile Discovery Center, located in DeLand, Florida. Owned and operated by Carl Barden, this Serpentarium is home to dozens of the world's most dangerous snakes, many of which are on display to educate the public. This location is also a Medtox and Venom laboratory, and it's the dangerous work going on behind the scenes that is saving human lives. Ooh, venomous reptiles. Good morning, Carl. Coyote, how you doing? Welcome. Good, how Thanks are you? Thanks for coming. Mara? Good morning, Coyote, welcome. Thank you guys so much for having me. This looks like the ultimate snake milking setup. This process is incredibly important. You guys are milking these snakes for the creation of antivenom. So tell us a little bit about this process. And I would classify this as arguably the most dangerous job in the United States at this point. But we never see it that way. We always think um, it's pretty well practiced. We do it so frequently, we handle 50 to 100 snakes a day, uh, typically four or five days a week. And probably most importantly, a number of these venoms are produced for the antivenoms, both here in North America and around the world. So let me just repeat that real quick. You said between 50 and 100 snakes a day. Have you ever been bitten in the process of milking snakes? Because yeah, accidents you know, do happen. We have about 500,000 venom extractions now, and every once in a while, right, he zigs and you zag and the whole thing goes bad. So I've had 11 snake bites um, in the last 27 years. Only nine of those resulted in envenomation and actual hospital stays. We had two of those bites were dry. Um, but then you'll see the, the work here at the table is close work, but it's really uh, rehearsed and it's done very carefully and methodically. And so we like to think it can be done very safely. So the first snake that we're gonna get out from this, you see there's these enclosures behind me. Now, let me ask you this question real quick. How many snakes total do you guys have on? We've got those? about 1,000 on site right now, about 500 on the venom line. Okay, the first snake that we're gonna take a look at is the Southern Copperhead, and oh wow. Oh my gosh, beautiful. And that's a wow. big example of a Southern. Uh, I was this gonna is say. About the, si the, the, the northern oh size, I mean, this is about as big as these guys get, and uh, she's really a perfect example. That's a big copperhead. I was gonna say, I've seen my fair share of copperheads. This is without question the biggest one I've ever seen. Wow. I'm gonna pivot out, Mara, and let you get into position, and we are going to begin the milking process. Copperhead, now, where would you rank the toxicity of the copperhead's venom as compared to uh, a cotton mouth or a, a diamondback, right? So this is not necessarily a bite that's gonna kill you. Typically, no, typically, no. Copperhead venoms are not seen as especially toxic. Copperhead venom is extremely hemolytic, so hemorrhage and destroys blood cells and this kind of thing. And that's a lot of copperhead venom, something like 50 milligrams in a shot, perhaps a little bit more for her. And um, probably takes well over 100 milligrams of copperhead venom to actually kill somebody. So it's just not typically a lethal dose that you get in a bite. She's beautiful if you want to touch her. It's just a spectacular snake oh my gosh. in every regard. And we always think that color, that pattern is just unmatched. Amazing. I mean, that venom yield right there, you can just hear the power of those fangs going into yeah, they you know, bite. the plastic you know, a very decisive there. bite, a rapid bite. And so, you know, it's an easy snake. You can see why copperheads bite more people in the Eastern United States than anything. Yep. You know? Wow. All right, we'll bring okay. her back, put her away. Whew. Oh, that was fantastic. And that's just our first snake. Are you ready? All right, this is it. I'm going to assist in the milking of a water moccasin. As soon as I give Carl the go-ahead, the snake is coming out, and then it's up to me to make sure that we get a good soft body press so that uh, Carl's not bitten in the process of what this is. All right, Carl, are you set? Okay, here we go. Bring out the viper. All right, again, kind of an average size snake perfect condition. And this is really typical of our local cottonmouth. This guy's a Volusia County snake. Um, she was caught right here as a baby. These guys are really prolific or, or common in some of the forests surrounding uh, DeLand. 
All right, let's go. We'll bring this guy. I'm going to do the same kind of sweep here. Come on in with your press. Good, beautiful. You got her. You're excellent. I've got her. You can pick her up. You're safe. Good. Put your press down. Get a hold of that body. Excellent, Coyote. Make sure your hands covering that bench, or you're going to get. Oh, going to get mussed on. Okay. Really good. Really good. Let's see if she'll give us a shot here. There she goes. You can feel the, the power in the whole body when they bite down like that. Oh, yeah. There she goes Holy again. Mackerel. Nice, good. Perfect. All right, we're going to return her to her cage. Okay. You got her. Excellent, Coyote. All my hands are shaking. Job. You did it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> that, really uh, good. You know, I, I was hands-on with the uh, snakes in Australia when we milked those species, but didn't necessarily have that pressure of having to gently pin down the body. Um, but anytime you're that close to one of these animals, I mean, even a slight margin of error can go catastrophically wrong. And from the venom yield that you see that came out of that snake, just unbelievable. It's just one bite from one of these snakes. So Coyote, that was excellent. I feel I feel all that adrenaline rushing through me. That's one snake and I wasn't even holding the snake by the head. So I can only imagine you doing this for a couple hours at a time, snake after snake after snake. And if you thought the water moccasin was impressive, now we're gonna bring out the Eastern Diamondback, which yeah. arguably is the most dangerous pit viper in the United States based on venom yield. I have a feeling that this is going to be intense. Wow, that is a big Eastern Diamondback. I think I just went to the bathroom in my pants a little bit. Holy cow, look at the size of that snake. Wow. That might be the biggest Eastern Diamondback I have ever seen. Wow. Okay, so now one of the key elements Don't of- Don't get any closer any than closer. right now. Okay, okay, yeah, no, I see she's, okay. she's, you know, I'm just gonna go like this and Good. talk over to the side like this, just in case you see she's in that classic S strike pose. Now, what makes these snakes so dynamic is that heat sensing pit on the front of their faces, right? So right now she's looking at me, she sees a heat signature that's definitely too big to be a prey item, which means I am likely a predator. I'm a threat at this moment. And like Carl said, I don't wanna get any closer because as you can see, they strike incredibly fast. And that strike happens so quick, if you're bitten by a snake of this size, it has the potential to kill you without question. No question, question about it. All right, an Eastern Diamondback, a bite from an adult Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake is a potentially fatal snake bite. There's no question. Now, when it comes to Eastern Diamondback versus Western Diamondback, which one do you think is more dangerous, Carl? You can see she's getting agitated now. I think now, both right? of those, I'm just gonna shift her on the table a little bit. Yep. I think both of those snakes are probably equally dangerous. Eastern Diamondback venom is probably just the slightest bit more toxic, mm -hmm. um, but just a little bit. And quantity-wise and size-wise, both of those guys are very serious rattlesnakes. So I, I think you're probably an equal on danger. Is everybody good? I'm gonna go ahead and catch him. Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's time. All right, here we go, guys. We're gonna do the... No I'm gonna shift. Yeah. I gotta shift and hold that baby up. Take just a step back no, here. No pressure yet. The most dangerous job in the United States right here, folks. There's a little now to keep him on the table. I'm gonna shift him and a little bit. Yeah. Carl, good. you're unbelievable. The focus that it takes, guys, to perform what this is. Don't change anything. You're good and easy. Wow, that is a very, very strong snake. Unbelievable muscular power without the body. Okay, you guys good? Whoa! That was a serious venom yield right there. My goodness. And that's really what makes the Eastern Diamondback so potentially dangerous, is that capability to really pile it out oh when they gosh. need to. Look at those fangs. Oh, and I actually see it's got a double set of fangs, which means it's getting ready to shut out one of those that's fangs, exactly right? right? That's well, exactly that right. Thing. Yeah. Yes. Wow, look at that. All right, guys, zoom in as best you can to get a shot of those fangs. You can see the hooked nature. If you're bitten by one of these snakes, it's going to be a very, very bad day. A bite from this viper will definitely kill you if you do not receive anti-venom treatment. Okay, is it okay to let go of the, the tail? Good. Wow, that go rattle. Okay, very good, back in. excellent. Oh, that, that was intense. I mean, just being able to control a snake of that size on a table like that is is a challenge. Wow, Carl, that was impressive, my friend. Holy mackerel. 
It's important to note that this venom will go into the creation of anti-venom, which eventually will save lives. So the work that Carl and Mara are doing here on a daily basis is saving anybody who accidentally comes upon one of these snakes and is bitten. Carl, I'm gonna give you a very dangerous thank you, sir. handshake to say thank you for having us behind the scenes at the lab here today to milk snakes. This was unbelievable. I'm sure one venom searing question that you all have is, what exactly happens when snake venom enters into the human body and reacts with its blood? Stay tuned, guys, because that episode is coming up next. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, Carl, I'm going to hand this off to you so that I don't drop it. That was crazy. Amazing job. Oh, my gosh. I'm so stoked. Being bitten by an animal is one of the worst experiences most people can imagine. Yet no matter how careful you are, accidents can and do happen every year. In the United States, it is accurate to say that Carl and Mara are literally putting their own lives at risk to ensure that anyone who is bitten by a venomous snake has a fighting chance for survival. If you would like to visit the Reptile Discovery Center or learn more about their med toxin venom laboratories, make sure to visit the website and schedule your chance to see these snakes in action. Hey Coyote Pack, if you can't wait for the thrilling conclusion where we see how human blood matches up against pit viper venom, you can join memberships right now and see the episode before anyone else. And make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you can follow along with me and the crew on our next wild adventure. <laughs>